the global success of the adventure touring segment, it's no surprise that pretty much every manufacturer across the globe has a machine to pique the interest of a rider looking for comfort, sporty on-road dynamics and long range ability. Two bikes that fit that bill nicely are the Motor Guzzi V85 TT and the new 2020 Yamaha Tracer 700. Each bike offers long distance comfort, room for two people, plus luggage and enough handling and power to excite new riders and more experienced pilots alike. But what makes this head to head so interesting is the methods taken to crack the adventure touring nut. Motor Guzzi stick to their transversely mounted V-twin engine, while Yamaha uses its phenomenally successful CP2 crossplane twin cylinder. But which makes the best all-round machine for riders looking for a little bit of everything? Starting at £10,899 for the base colours, the V85 TT is at the pricier end of the Midway Adventure Touring segment. On an £1,800 deposit, you'll be paying around £170 per month for the classy looking Italian. The Tracer, on the other hand, is and always has been an incredibly good value motorcycle, commanding a price today of £7,945. On a £2,500 deposit, the Tracer could be sat in your garage for around £89 per month. I've literally paid more for my bike's monthly insurance premium than that. The V85 TT is, of course, powered by the traditional transversely mounted V-twin engine. With liquid cooling, two valves per cylinder and pushrod actuation, the V85 TT might sound a tad archaic, but don't let that put you off. Motor Guzzi have been building this configuration of engine for longer than most of us watching this video have been on the planet. They know what they're doing and it shows. The Motor Guzzi's engine is an absolute peach of a unit and it produces a claimed 80 bhp and 80 newton meters or 59 pound foot of torque. Its ride-by-wire throttle is crisp and direct, and on the launch of the bike in Sardinia, the Guzzi genuinely impressed me with its friendly nature around town and gutsy bottom end out on the open road. The Tracer 700 is powered by one of the most successful cross-platform engines that Yamaha has ever produced, the CP2 689cc Parallel Twin. And the reason this engine works so well in so many bikes, from the naked MT-07 to the new off-road inspired Tenere 700, is its genuine usability. It's an absolute masterstroke of engine design. It produces 74 bhp and 50 pound foot of torque. It's lively, smooth, and it pulls out of corners like a much bigger bike. The fact that Yamaha's engineers have managed to make the latest generation of this engine Euro 5 compliant without losing any of the unit's power, torque, or rideability makes us think we'll be seeing this engine in new bikes for a very long time to come. Of the two bikes that we're looking at here, one is blessed with the kind of range that is normally the reserve of the big Bavarian built touring machines, and it's the V85 TT. The tank on this thing is a cavernous 23 litres, which if the 50 mpg the bike returned on the launch is true, means you have a theoretical range of around 300 miles. That's not something that many midway adventure motorcycles can match. The tank on the Tracer 700, on the other hand, is a more compact 17 litres, meaning a theoretical range of around about 200 miles. It's not bad, but it is slightly outgunned by the mile munching Guzzi. After spending a full day hammering around both on and off-road on the launch of the V85 TT, I was really impressed by the levels of comfort that are offered. The wide sculpted seat offers plenty of support and meant by the end of the day I had no numb bum or aches and pains whatsoever. Some of the taller riders on the launch did mention that the lower body position was a tad cramped although for my 5 foot 7 frame it was spot on. The Tracer 700 too gets a big thumbs up on the comfort front. The upper and lower body ergonomics are tweaked from the old model, with slightly wider bars making the riding position more neutral and easier going than the old bike. 
If there was one negative on the new Yamaha, it was that the stock screen offered little protection from the elements, regardless of how high it was set. It's quite a small and neat looking screen, although that does translate into a fair amount of turbulence at motorway speeds. But an upgraded touring screen is available, and if you were going to buy the Tracer 700, I'd say it's a sensible purchase. If you've ridden both of these bikes yourself, you'll already know that they handle better than a mid-weight bike with tall suspension should. Both are as much at home on the motorway as they are at hammering along a twisty B road. While the Yamaha looks the sporty of the two, and at a push it possibly is, the Motokuzi isn't far behind though. Both bikes have adjustable front suspension with spring load and rebound damping on each, although the upside down kit fitted to the Guzzi is a slightly more high spec looking setup than the Yamaha's. It's fitted with telescopic items and although they are adjustable for this year, they just don't quite look as high end. Out on the road, you don't really feel the difference of the slightly lower spec Yamaha suspension. It's compliant, quick to turn, soaks up bumps really, really well and offers the adjustability that you didn't get with the old model. It's a step up, but maybe not quite matching the Moto Guzzi in this test. On the braking front, the Moto Guzzi again has a slight edge over the Yamaha, but again, it's only by a whisker. It's kitted out with Brembo four pot stoppers that just feel classier than the Yamaha's own brand blue spot calipers. It's not even that the brakes on the Tracer are below par, they're very, very good. It's just the Brembo calipers give a feel at the lever that very few braking manufacturers can match. With two very different takes on how to build the best sporty touring adventure machine with a bit of adventure thrown in for good measure, you'd think it would be easy to choose between them. But in truth, they are so evenly matched on the road, it's a fairly tough decision. For me, the bike I'd go for would be based on what it was going to do when I had it. If it was straight up commuting and the odd short tour or weekend away, the value and on-road dynamics of the Tracer 700 cannot be ignored. It's a proper all-rounder that's been designed from the ground up to suit a massive slice of the motorcycle population. But if I wanted a bike that was going to help me cross continents and take on the occasional light off-road section, the Moto Guzzi V85 TT would have to be the choice. Granted, it is pricier than the Yamaha and many competitors in the midweight market for that matter. But the level of spec and high-end equipment that's fitted to it is perfectly suited to this retro style machine. It's a very, very good bike. And although more expensive than the Yamaha, it definitely shouldn't be counted out. Which bike takes your vote in this midway adventure touring shootout? Let us know in the comments below. Also, to ensure you don't miss out on any future content from Visor Down, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And for all the best news, reviews, and motorcycle features, please head to visordown.com.